Hey guys, Joe here with another setup guide. And today we're gonna to be teaching you how to set up port forwarding on your Elite Recorder. So keep in mind, we do have a different video for Seabell Recorders regarding port forwarding. And if you are looking to get port forwarding set up today on a Seabell Recorder, check out the link to that video in the description at the bottom of the page. So the reason that we set up port forwarding is to allow our recorder to communicate with the World Wide Web, allowing it again to talk to our smartphone and our computer so we can see our cameras anywhere, anytime. Before we get started though, there's gonna be some important information we need and tools we need to have available. So let's go ahead and take a look at our introductory setup checklist. First, make sure the recorder is powered on and you can see your cameras on the local display. Next, make sure there's an ethernet cable firmly connected to the LAN port on your recorder. If you're using a recorder with more than one LAN port, use LAN port number one. Also, make sure that same cable is firmly connected to a port supplying internet on your router. It's important to know that you shouldn't try to use any PoE ports for this setup. Many recorders have a group of onboard PoE ports. Those ports are for cameras only. We're also going to need a PC connected to the same router as the recorder, either by Ethernet or by Wi-Fi. As far as software goes, we will need to download and extract the Elite Configuration Tool. This tool can scan the network to find our recorder and help us access it from our PC. This handy program can be found on the download section of our website, securitycameraking.com. After the program is extracted, make sure you can locate it. A good way to do this is to simply put a shortcut to the config tool on your desktop like you see in the video. Links are available in the description in the bottom of the page. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is open up a Word or Notepad so we can have that available to take down info as we go along. Next, we're gonna open up a command prompt window. Click your start menu and then type the letters CMD into the search field. Click the resulting icon or just tap enter on the keyboard to open it up. Once command prompts open, we're gonna enter in a special command to get some network data. That command is called ipconfig and it's spelled IPC, ON, FIG, and just hit enter. From the resulting ethernet adapter data you see, we need the default gateway. This is the router's IP address for accessing its settings, and there are other settings on the recorder we need to make sure have this information too. Copy down the default gateway IP into your notepad, then you can close your command prompt. Next, we're gonna open the Elite Configuration tool. Once open, it should populate a list with the recorder. If it doesn't right away, go ahead and click the refresh wheel you see at the top of the page, and this should populate the recorder. We need to take note of the IP address the recorder is currently set to, so go ahead and copy that information down into your notepad as well. Once the recorder's IP is written down, we're gonna to need to open up the recorder in a browser. And you can do this by clicking the IE logo next to the recorder's listing in Config Tool. When the recorder has opened in a browser, log in using the exact same information you would use to log into the recorder locally. Next, we need to access our network menu. We can do this by clicking Management in the top left corner and then clicking Network in the resulting drop-down menu. This will put us on the TCP IP tab, which is exactly where we need to be. If you have a recorder with more than one Ethernet port, remember we are using Ethernet port 1, and if you only have one, you'll only see the one listed here. When ready, click the pencil icon underneath the Edit column. On the next page, you'll notice that your IP address is currently grayed out. This is fine because it's currently selected to DHCP to get an IP automatically from the router. We're gonna shift this over to static and click OK to save it. This will prevent the recorder from getting a different IP address than the one it currently has if it ever has to reboot for any reason. We also need to check and make sure our preferred DNS matches the default gateway of the router. Ours already does, so we don't have to make any changes, but if you have to change yours, go ahead and do that now, and then click OK in the bottom right-hand corner to save the IP settings. The next thing we need to do is change the default ports in the recorder. We want to do this just to make sure anything is more secure. Click the port page from the submenu on the left, and pay attention to the TCP port and the HTTP port. Using the public port range, we are going to select two ports arbitrarily from that range to change these ports to. We've selected 48301 for TCP and 48300 for HTTP. Feel free to use any ports from the range you see displayed on the bottom of the screen, then click OK. This will likely cause the recorder's page to reload 
as Internet Explorer would have to get to the recorder's IP address using the new port once that information is saved. However, after the reload, feel free to just close out IE, and then we suggest that you copy down that new port information into your notes. Okay, now that we have our port info written down, we now need to access our router. We can do this by opening an IE window, clearing out the address bar, typing in HTTP colon slash slash, followed by our default gateway IP and hitting enter. Once on the router's page, log in using your router settings, username and password. Again, if you don't have this information, contact your ISP. Now we are on the router's main settings page. Please be advised though, that your router's main settings page may look very different than this and in fact probably does. Although the process for port forwarding is essentially the same in any router that you could be using, a lot of the menus may be found in different places and the options may have different ways of entering the information. If you have trouble following along with this guide because your router is very different, we suggest visiting the website www.portforward.com. That website has a list of many different routers from many different manufacturers and very deep and video and picture guides on how to access many of the different settings pages for a number of different routers that we couldn't possibly account for in a single video. If you're having trouble, visit that website, look up your router's info and meet us back here. Okay, so for this TP-Link wireless end router, we're actually gonna be navigating to the forwarding section and virtual server, which it automatically puts us on. You'll notice the table here is empty because we haven't added any rules yet. We'll be plugging in a rule with an IP address and some port info. Go ahead and click add new. On the next page, you're gonna notice that we have a few fields we need to fill in. The first is the service port. We can start with either one of the ports that we chose, so we're gonna start with the HTTP and fill in 48300. The IP address it's asking for is the recorder's IP address, which we wrote down over here as well. So let's go ahead and punch that information in. After that, the internal port is actually just requesting a repeat of the same port we already entered. 48300 is the port that we chose, not the 48301. Put in the 48300 again. On your protocol, you wanna make sure that you're set to either TCP or if you have a both or all option, use that. Leave your status set to enabled and ignore common service port if you have that option. Go ahead and click save. Awesome, we have our first port forwarding rule entered, but we do need to add one more for the 48301. When you're ready, click add new. So same exact thing on the, we did before as the previous page, except this time we are using the 48301. So go ahead and enter that in, followed by the recorder's IP address one more time. And then the 48301 again, make sure you're set to all, make sure you're also set to enabled. And once you have all these uh, boxes checked, go ahead and click save. You'll notice we have two port forwarding rules in this table now, and we're almost done. We just have to make sure that these rules are successful and working. To do that, we're going to go to a website called yougetsignal.com. From this page, we're gonna click port forwarding tester. You'll see your WAN IP written out over here and you'll see a port number spot as well. First, we're gonna go ahead and test our 48300 HTTP port. Go ahead and click check. Awesome, you see a green flag and a note saying our port is open. We're gonna check 01 as well because we wanna be secure. Amazing, so now we have our ports forwarded, everything's checked off and we are good to go. All right, guys, congratulations on successfully setting up port forwarding on your Elite Recorder. The next step is to take that information and input it into either your smartphone, tablet, or your computer so that you can successfully view those cameras using that port forwarding setup anywhere, anytime. We have a video coming up for how to add your recorder to EVP or Elite Viewer Pro, which is our application for iOS and Android. And we also have another video coming up for how to add your recorder to the computer application Smart PSS. Be sure to check out those videos. Links also found in the description at the bottom of the page. Thank you for sticking around with us. Till next time, guys, have a great one and stay safe.